Um, so we uh, had to figure out how to safely get the Golden Eagles off of the Northern Channel Islands. Um, and uh, the first couple dozen of them were, all things considered, fairly straightforward. It was, uh, they, they, that, that, that happened without much, um, much uh, effort relative to the last ones that, ha that uh, we had to get off the island. And that is because as the number of eagles got smaller and smaller, they got smarter and smarter figuring out that we were trying to get rid of them and, um, and they did not want to get caught. And, and so um, the last two eagles on, on uh, the Northern Channel Islands were a breeding pair. And over a two year period, we spent about $400,000 trying to get rid of just that many eagles. Um, and, and, and we couldn't find them. Uh, the, only, only, the only way we could find them was by uh, finding the radio collars of the foxes that they had killed. And, um, and this, this same pair of eagles in that same two-year period had killed over 20% of the entire world's population of Santa Cruz Island foxes. So we, we had to get rid of these things. And, um, and so we had convened this meeting of international experts in live catching big birds. And um, we had a guy there from Mexico who um, his expertise was catching big birds by essentially gluing them to the nest. Um, we had another. We had a, 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 another. Um, we had a guy from Scotland. His expertise was was burying himself in the golden eagle nest so that when the eagle came in, he just reached up to him. But we we opted to go for the injecto egg. And the uh, the injecto egg was a is a fake egg that we put in the nest. We replaced the, the real egg with this this uh, this fake egg, and it had a, a radio triggered syringe in it that would that would go up and inject the, the parent bird with an anesthetic, and then the, it would pass out and it would fall out of the nest into this net that we set up under the cliff for it to. Um, <laughs> So needless to say, that did not work. <laughs> and the, the, the point of that story, and sorry for going long, but it's, it's uh, um, is to point out that Russell Gallup will approve this shit. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I say that not to to suggest that he, that he might uh, be a little unhinged or, or to invite another lawsuit upon us, but to point out how much I admire that, how much I admire the fact that Russell would do that, because that to me demonstrates a, a, a commitment to getting the job done and, the, and a, a real creativity and a real courage. To, to make sure that, that what needed to happen in Channel Islands National Park was going to happen. You know, I work for the Nature Conservancy, most of you um, work for the, the National Park Service, two tremendous institutions, two tremendously important institutions. But the, the reality is, is that these, these, these institutions don't make the changes that we need them to make in the world just by virtue of their mandates or their, their, their logos. They, they make a difference in the world by the people who, who come to work to, to insist that they rise to their promise in the world and they rise to the challenges of what their founding principles were and what their traditions are and to, and to use those positions to, to push the boundaries and to make sure that these great institutions really rise to the, the incredible challenge of doing conservation in this, in this crazy world. That's what you brought, Russell. The leadership that you brought to this park is just extraordinary. It's been inspirational, and it's been just a real pleasure and privilege to work alongside you. So thank you so much.